Welcome to Sports Report Radio, the Nebraska Cornhusker Show. Grant Wistrom, probably the greatest player, my words, in the history of Nebraska. Grant, welcome to Sports Report Radio. Hey, Kyle. How you doing, man? Man, I'm doing great. The question is, is what's it like for you? You're a Nebraska Cornhusker your entire life. You've had so many accomplishments in high school, college, professional ranks, but you're always going to be that three-time national champion at Nebraska. What's that like for you to hear that and talk about Nebraska? Uh, well, just to be a part of it, obviously, is uh, very humbling. And the, the only reason why people still talk about it is because football means that much people of Nebraska and the fans of Nebraska. Um, so without them, you know, I'm still really, really irrelevant. So uh, I do, it just take a lot of pride in being able to be a part of that university in that era, playing underneath Coach Osborne in front of those fans. Uh, it's all incredibly humbling and um, without a doubt, one of the highlights of my life. What is it like? I mean, you walk in the stadium. I mean, Nebraska, and I've been to games there. You talked about those fans. How special are those fans for you playing on the field and hearing them just go crazy? And I think it what sell out since every game since 1962. It, it, it's just incredible. It, it is pretty awesome. And you know what? When uh, my wife and I were dating back when I was playing for the Rams and. Uh, she got to go to a lot of big games when I was playing there. She got to go to Super Bowl when we moved out to Seattle and I was playing for the Seahawks. But uh, I, she was heading to Lincoln with me for her first Nebraska game. And I just said, Melissa, I, go, I know you've been to a lot of big games and a lot of incredible atmospheres. I'm like, but you've never seen anything like this. And uh, she was blown away. And anybody that's ever gone to a game at Memorial Stadium, you know, I know there's a lot of very tradition-rich uh, atmospheres for college football but I will put Nebraska up against any one of them um, as far as just the fans the energy, the excitement uh, the love the, between the university and the team and the fans and the team, um, there's nothing like it um, Grant three time national champion in, in four years, I mean you know, people modern day they think of Alabama they think of Clemson I mean that's a big deal at Nebraska. I mean, three out of four, those great teams. What's it like for you to have that experience to be a champion that many times and in college football? You know, I don't I don't really think of it like that. It was just that's what we were there to do. And so uh, to sit, and I'm horrible, and it's part of my, it's a blessing and a curse for me. I think it's. I don't, I don't dwell on mistakes very well, and I don't dwell on successes very well. I, I, I try to learn quickly from them and move forward. So I haven't, you know, I don't really sit back and reflect on, you know, winning three national championships. Um, I appreciate the hell out of it. Uh, I'll go back and play there. I mean, if people ask me if I miss football, and my time at Lincoln is really the only time that I miss playing football. So uh, I love it, and it was awesome. And uh, to be a part of it is, is incredible. And, you know, everybody, like you just mentioned, everybody wants to talk about Alabama, you know, and the, the, the run they're having out of Clemson like that. But, you know, we were those teams before they were those teams. Uh, but, you know, that was 20-some years ago, and they're, they're the new the, the new guys doing it. So, you know, we get forgotten about, but, but that's okay. You know, we know what we did. We, we know, and quite honestly, probably did it with less, less talent than these guys have on their teams today. But we played together. We played because we loved each other. We loved Coach Osborne. We loved Coach McBride. And I, I do believe that the sum uh, collectively w was greater. You know, the, the sum of the parts was collectively greater than, than what the just the parts that were there. And you know, we played well above and beyond what we were capable of just because we cared about each other and we loved each other. Hey, Grant, question for you. What's going on in your life today? I mean, how are things going with you and what's going on in your life? Uh, I work with a mortgage company called Gershman Mortgage. Uh, they helping them expand in Nebraska. They're pretty big in Missouri and the rest of the Midwest, but um, they really haven't gotten a foothold in Nebraska until about this past year. We've got two offices open there now, which is pretty awesome. Um, but then uh, the big bulk, the bulk of my time this last year or so is 
uh, been applying for and winning uh, medical marijuana licenses in the state of Missouri where I live. Uh, it was put on the ballot a couple years ago and was uh, ratified or approved last year. Uh, and the whole application process has been going on for about the last year. Uh, we found out in January that we won. Uh, we applied to be a vertically integrated company, so cultivation, manufacturing, and dispensary. But uh, unfortunately, um, we missed out on the cultivation. So, we, but we did win our manufacturing and dispensary licenses. And, uh, just kicking the can down the road, you know, trying to move this along. It's been a little bit hard with uh, things being shut down due to COVID. But, uh, you know, we're still advancing the ball and plan on being up and running by the middle of January. Hey, Grant, what do you tell Coach Frost? I mean, how excited is it to see one of your guys back coaching at Nebraska, you know, to bring the program back to the heyday? I mean, what do you say to Coach Frost and say, hey, am I there? I can, and whatever I can do to help, I'm there to help you make some calls or whatever. Or, or how excited is it to see Coach Frost there now? Oh, no. I, uh, that was the only guy for the job in my book. And, um, you know, and then and I don't, there's no pressure. Scott's not going to take any more pressure. You know, there's not going to be any pressure from the outside that's not more than he's putting on himself. But, you know, I, I truly believe that if it's not Scott, I don't know who it would have been uh, to get the job done. But uh, he's got my full confidence. I think he's an incredible coach. Uh, his players absolutely love him. Um, when he left UCF, you know, and you were seeing some of the, the social media content coming out, you know, when coaches leave, players usually aren't happy for him. Every one of his players was happy for him uh, and because they knew what it meant to him. He had poured into them for, for a long time, and so the love was coming back and going back out to him uh, when he was going to get to come back to Nebraska. So uh, it's just a matter of time. You know, there it was a complete, you know, and I, and I don't think that, you know, we thought it's just about X's and O's and the Jimmys and Joes out there running around when Scott would talk about a culture shift. Uh, but I think it goes a lot deeper than that. It's more than just a football team that had to be righted. So I think he had a lot of fires to put out when he got to the university, but I think he's done an amazing job. Uh, he's building a program. He's not going out and just getting a lot of, you know, mercenaries out of the transfer portal or from JUCOs and things like that. You know, he's trying to build a program. Uh, one that we would recognize from back in the day where kids are tough, kids practice hard, and recruiting kids that love to play football. You know, it's nice to get kids with stars behind their, their names, but it's more important to get kids that love to play football. And he realizes that. And so I think that's the kid that he's going for now, a kid that loves to play football that's going to come in, pay his dues for four years, and turn himself into the best football player he can possibly be. And, and I just think it's a matter of time before, you know, maybe another year or two before we're competing for the Big Ten. And, you know, anything after that would be phenomenal. But to be competitive in the Big Ten is very realistic. Hey, let's say Coach Frost calls you up. What do you tell kids that are thinking about going to Nebraska or, or their folks are saying, hey, we want our son there? What, what do you tell them from your experience and, and what they should expect there and, you know, about being a Cornhusker? Uh, the – you are going to be looked after. You're going to be cared for. You know, uh, the academic support staff is second to none. Uh, the training table is second to none. The fans that you know are going to cheer for you on Saturday are second to none. And it's just, you know, it's almost it's like you're getting to buy Apple when it was down a little bit. You know, getting to go to a place like that right now where they're down a little bit and get to be a part of the. The, the renaissance of the program would be freaking awesome. And to be able to put, you know, your fingerprints all over that program, helping it turn around and just go down in history as being part of the group of guys that turned it around. Um, you know, I try to share all that with them and just also let them know just once again, what a special place it is and how special it can be once again. Grant, thanks so much, man. I mean, here we are talking to a legend here, and, and I just appreciate you taking a little bit of your time. We try to keep these interviews about 10 minutes, you know, to make them, you know, keep them there. But how can I thank you enough? But, I mean, you're just the best, and, and I hope we can catch up with you down the line. But thanks, Grant, for taking a little bit of your time today. I appreciate it. Uh, you're very welcome, Kyle. Take care and have a great day, man.